Man, I love the 35XX SP, but I feel like there's some way I can make it better. How could I make it better? How do I make hot dogs better? Mustard! There it is! Your first step is you're going to want to go to muos.dev. On the left-hand side, you're going to see release 35XX plus an H. You're going to want to download 2405 beans. Takes you to a pretty simple page. You download the zip file, then you wait for it to download. Almost there, and we're done. Next up, you extract the zip file, and you'll have a folder called muos blah 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 beans. That's where the image file is. Now you're going to want to use Belena Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager or whatever you normally use to burn images. You're going to want to select the image file. You're going to want to make real sure you are burning to your actual SD card. For this one, I used the 64 gigabyte card I got from Micro Center. It was probably like seven bucks, but uh, get a quality brand. 64 is probably good for this. If you want to go crazy, 128, you can add a lot more games, but anything more than 128 is probably overkill. And then you play the waiting game. I can speed time up with my editing powers. Put the SD card into the handheld, power it on, and you will be greeted with a screen that says device type. If you're using SP, you're going to want to pick plus. It's the same screen, same control scheme, same everything. You're going to want to select your time zone. I can't tell you what time zone you live in, only you know that. Then you add your time and date, press the B button to save, and you're good to go. Shut it down and put the SD card back into your computer. Now you might notice two partitions, neither of which are the right size. That's because Windows is so helpful and it doesn't realize that there's a very simple MuOS ROMs folder for you. You're going to want to right click on the start menu, go to disk management, go down to your SD card. You're going to see a 55.56 gigabyte ROMs partition. All you have to do is right click on that and assign it a drive letter. I was going to assign Z for Zoo, but then I said, let's go M for Moo. The computer will immediately recognize the SD card and probably even open it up for you. A couple things we're going to want to download first. A, if you want to have cheats, I'm not judging, but if you want to have cheats, you have to go to the LibRetro database and download the RetroArch database. You can't update your cores online because it'll screw up configurations. You're also going to want to go to the MooOS Discord, there's a link in the description, and get themes. I really like this GBOS theme, and it's located right here, GBOS underscore grid. Download that. Easy enough. Yeah, I want to download it. And heck, while you're in here, you should probably get some drastic configuration stuff. So you're going to want to go to Issues and type in Drastic, if you spell it correctly, idiot zoo. You're going to want to go to the completely effed up one, and there's a configuration file in there called config zip. All you got to do is drop it in muos slash emulator slash drastic slash config, and you're good to go. There's also a link to the key bindings. MuOS is pretty unique when it comes to custom firmware because it's pretty folder structure agnostic. You have a ROMs folder, and then you make your folders yourself. The way I did it was I grouped it by system. So I had Sega, I had Arcade, I had Atari. But you really just need a folder that says the system name, like Super Nintendo, NES, and then your ROMs go in that folder. So however you want the folder structure to look when you're navigating on the handheld, that's probably how you should set it up. Adding your ROMs couldn't be easier. You just copy that folder structure from your hard drive and you dump it onto the ROMs folder. If you have a lot of ROMs, it's gonna take a while. So while these are all uploading, heck, might as well put your BIOS on there too. BIOS is easy enough. You get your BIOS files, which you can find online. I'm not gonna tell you how to get them, but you take your BIOS files and you drop them into the BIOS folder on your MuOS card. Easy enough. Remember those cheats we talked about earlier? Well, you're going to want to go into that zip file, find the CHT folder, and then copy everything in there and paste it onto your SD card in the MuOS folder, the RetroArch folder, and the Cheats folder. Like so. That's going to take a while too. The theme of this section is copying takes a while. Remember that theme we downloaded? It's a zip file. All you got to do here is copy it from your hard drive to the archive folder. Easy and you're gonna use the archive manager on the actual handheld to install it. We also have those drastic configuration files. Well, guess what? They go in under MuOS, emulator, drastic, config. Just copy it all in there. You're gonna overwrite it. It's gonna yell at you, but it's fine. Overwrite all those 12 items from your config zip. You'll say, yeah, replace them. You're probably gonna want box art for your games. There's two ways to do it. There's the hard way and there's the easy way. Let's go over the hard way first. You can use Scraper, which is a program that connects to ScreenScraper.fr. You have to have an account on ScreenScraper.fr, and it's really slow. 
But if you're going to use Scraper, all you have to do is point it to your ROMs directory on the SD card, tell it what kind of images you want, and then let it run. It's going to take a long time. It's notoriously slow, but it'll work and it'll give you the exact images you want for your stuff. However, the devs at MooOS, maybe they've anticipated you don't want to do that. So if you go to their website, to the artwork section, they'll show you the catalog structure, which is where you put your art folders. And then at the bottom of the page, there's a link to the MooOS artwork. Now it's all your image files already zipped and already set up in the right folders. And these will match common ROM set names. You might have to change the names of your files, but honestly, it's the easiest way to do it. Once you download the images, you just copy them over your SD card into the MooOS slash info folder. Through the magic of editing, that copying is done now. And if you go into all these folders, you can see that you have box art for all your games. Let's check out uh, Game Boy Advance. There you go. There's all your beautiful box art. That's all you got to do on the computer. So put the SD card back in your handheld and you're good to go. Now that all that's taken care of, we're just going to turn it on. Gary, put the Moo OS shortcuts on the screen. Once you familiarize yourself with these, you'll be good to go. They are slightly different from maybe like your standard RetroArch shortcuts, but it's the same idea. You press this menu button along with R or L or R2 or L2 to save, to fast forward, to load. Pretty basic stuff. If you don't like that stuff, you can always change it, and I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. But first, let's hook up our Wi-Fi in configuration, Wi-Fi network. Turn the Wi-Fi on, it's always a good start. And then press X to scan. I'm not gonna show this part, but I am gonna connect to my network. So I'm connected to the Wi-Fi, but you can't tell. So my next step is going to be back in configuration under general settings, interface options, and I'm gonna put my network as visible. Save that, and there you go. There's your little Wi-Fi icon to let you know you are connected. Easy peasy. If you wanna adjust brightness, you hold down the menu button and press volume up or volume down. Moo OS has this little toggle on the bottom to let you know how far you are. Uh, volume, just volume up or volume down. Pretty easy stuff. If you do want to change your RetroArch shortcuts or shaders or anything like that, you're going to have to go to Applications and directly open up RetroArch. If you make the changes while you're playing a game, it's not going to save. But if you open up RetroArch directly, you can go to your settings, change your input, change your hotkeys and say maybe Maybe you want to set show FPS to the A button. So you'd hit A, set it to the A button, back out, back out, back out, configuration file, save current configuration, and that's going to save to your RetroArch configuration for the whole system. Once you're done making all your changes, you're always going to want to go back and save to the configuration file, and then you can quit. One of the changes I made was I downloaded that cool Game Boy theme, and the way you install it is through Archive Manager, which is in Applications. Go to Archive Manager, See my GBOS grid, you extract that, it extracts it for you, it sets it up for you, and then back out of here, go back to your configuration theme picker, and there's a bunch that it comes with, including this completely unhinged beans theme with a, with a Z. Look at that. That's insane. I like it. I really like where they're going with it, but it's a little bit much, even for me. So we're going to go back into config theme picker and we're going to go back to that GBOS. Now I really like GBOS because it honestly it gives me like early Onion OS vibes and under the hood this is very different than Onion OS but this interface I don't know I really like it. It has the Game Boy Color, it has a super retro feel. This is definitely my preferred theme and also look what happens when you have this theme and you reboot or shut it off and turn it back on. Hold please. <laughs> That's pretty neat. I like that. I was going to show you how to tweak each system to get the best performance and the best looks and everything, best shaders, but honestly, they did a really good job. The only thing that really need tweaked was Drastic, and that's why we downloaded that config file and extracted it to that specific Drastic drive earlier. The only thing I would recommend is if you really, really, really want to change the shaders, maybe like for Game Boy Advance or other handheld stuff, I like uh, handheld slash dot, or I like LCD grid version 2. And then for 4x3 systems, this is pretty good. But if you really like CRT filters, like you like that curved effect, you can always go into CRT and pick fake CRT geom. But honestly, everything they give you out of the box works great. Just a quick run through. You have Explore. That's where you get to your ROMs. You have Favorites, which are games that you've marked as favorite. 
obviously. The box art we added from that zip file, it shows up. Pretty slick. History will tell you all the stuff you played. There's some more of that pretty box art. Apps are where you go to your archive manager, your backup manager, port master. You don't launch ports directly from here, but you install them from here. So go into port master. Guaranteed the first time you open it up, you're going to have to download stuff. And chances are every subsequent time you open it up, you're going to have to download stuff because they update this a lot. Luckily, it's usually a very, very small file. See, it's trying to auto update now. If there is an update, it's a super small file. And in here, you can add games like Shredder's Revenge or Fallout, where you have to have all your game data from your PC version. You can also go in here to ready to run ports and just find, oh boy, a couple hundred. Well, let's, uh, let's download Titan Tactics. Super easy. If you're connected to the internet, you hit A. Yeah, that seems okay. And you hit install. It downloads it from the GitHub. There you go. It was installed successfully. Back out of here. Exit. And then it's added to the same folder as your ROM. So we're going to go to Explore. You see we have that arcade folder. We have the Atari folder, a Neo Geo folder, all of our Nintendo stuff in one folder, our ports, Sega, Sony, and Turbo Graphics, which I just realized I spelled wrong. Maybe that's why the art's not showing up. But for ports, you'll see we have Titan Tactics, which I just installed, and Shredder's Revenge, which I installed earlier off camera because it takes probably 15 minutes to install. Let's try Ninja Turtles. Now, sometimes it opens up with the screen kind of configured weird. Easy way to get around that is just to go to your options and make sure you have full screen. Easy peasy. This plays great on here. And you might be thinking, Zoo, this plays great on a lot of stuff. This plays great on older Ambernick handhelds. The reason it's important that this is playing now is because of the upgrade to that 64-bit architecture. Prior to Beans, you couldn't play this game on here. Or if you somehow managed to get it to work, it wouldn't work well. This runs great. Uh, it features the rumble, which is cool. And yeah, it's actually really fun to be able to play this in a little clamshell where you can just take it with you, put it in your pocket, and then you got a brand new Ninja Turtles game ready to go. With this slick unified front end, you can play all your games easily all the way from arcade classics like Simpsons, what's in that tree? To your home consoles. Yeah. Obviously, you get GBA in here. Somewhere, Russell Decor is frantically commenting that this is based off of a different Japanese game. And even Nintendo DS, which because we put those configuration files in, we have custom hotkeys and we can play, eh, I like to call them Game Boy Advance 2.0 games, ones where the second screen's not super important, but they look amazing on here and they play really nice. So, what did we learn? We learned that Mustard OS is definitely ready for prime time. I'm not gonna lie, the last two versions that I tested, I wasn't crazy about them. But this, I don't know, they added just the right amount of stuff. And with the trajectory they're going of do 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 the next one could be the best custom firmware yet. Some of the things I like about it are that it's minimalistic, but you don't lose advanced cores. Like you can play DS on here, you can play PSP or N64, that's all in there. It supports Portmaster. I haven't really dabbled too much in Portmaster, but I was playing Shredder's Revenge on there during my kid's gymnastics class, and I was having an amazing time. And then with the right themes, like this one, it has almost an Onion OS feel. It's, uh, it's simple enough to pick up and play and be intuitive, but there's a lot more underneath the hood. I'm really excited about this. I look forward to their future endeavors, and you should go to muos.dev, link in the description, and download it yourself if you want to give it a shot. I think it's really well suited for the 35XXSP and the entire XX line. And 
the primary dev messaged me today and showed me a video where there's a suspend sleep button and when you close this it turns the screen off and it has a proper sleep mode utilizing that magnet in there that's for the next release but he's shown it to me it's working right now in the dev builds all around a pretty cool custom firmware if i missed any steps or if you're having some problems please comment uh I probably did miss some steps. I know just enough to be dangerous with some of this stuff. So I, I, I probably did screw up. So leave lots of comments. Say, Zoo, you idiot. You didn't show us how to put ROMs on or something. I think I did. I'm pretty sure I showed you how to put ROMs on. But if I did miss something, leave a comment. And be sure to like and subscribe. And stay tuned for more zany Zoo reviews. And we're probably going to do a lot more videos on the 35XX SP because this thing's amazing. And all sorts of other stuff. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you. Goodbye.